So you are a creator, you're putting together a PC build and you've got to the PSU or power supply part. And how on earth do you know which power supply to get? There's so many different specs, different stuff that there are on the box. How do you know which one is a good one? And how do you know which one is a bad one? And how do you know which power supply explodes? Yes. Some do. So let's talk about the power supplies, especially for creators, because it's a slightly different thinking to just usual gamers or someone who builds a PC for non-creative use. Let's talk. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. I've got an example over here, a company called FSB, and they've got an 850 watt power supply over here. And you might have heard about this company if you are a hardcore you know pc guy you probably have but if you're new maybe you're a creator who not always keeps up with all the psu guides and you know parts then you might be thinking how do i know if this is a good power supply or not should i trust it should i not trust it is this going to explode or not first thing you need to consider when buying a power supply is the wattage as you can see this is 850 watts this is 750 watts this is 1000 watt over here this is 1200 watt 1750 and they go range all the way from like 350 watts all the way to like 2000 watts so how do you know how much is enough for you so basically how you can figure out how many watts do you need for your pc is a google a psu calculator and you'll probably be kind of granted with a few websites there's a lot of different power supply many manufacturers will have this uh, calculator on the website as well but be quiet has a good one csonic has a good one as well so when you go onto the website basically just put in what cpu you're using what gpu you're using how many fans how many sata or hard drives are you planning to use in your pc build and then it's going to give you a calculated overall wattage how many watts this you know system will draw and then it's going to give you a recommendation of a power supply i would not follow the recommendations from there but look at how many watts your system draws and then times that by 1.5 because a lot of the parts inside your PC system, even your CPU, GPU, other parts uh, will spike in terms of the power draw of the you know system. And that 1.5 kind of is like the safety net that your system is not going to clip out or your system is not going to you know just suddenly shut down. But also will give you a little bit of a future proofness if you want to upgrade your GPU to a little bit of higher one. Then you do have that wattage kind of gap in there where you can upgrade basically. And also running your power supply or your system at always 100% of the wattage so for example if it is 550 watts that your system will draw and you think oh I'm gonna just gonna get a 550 watt power supply as well in theory it will work but at the same time your power supply is gonna be drawing always 100% of you know the wattage which is not very good because it's also gonna be very loud the fans gonna be on and so on if you do want to kind of very much future proof your system then I would 2x your power system draw so if it is 550 watt you know power draw get like a 1000 watt power supply or a little bit higher one the thinking for that is if you get a good power supply you'll see in a moment it will last you for a very very long time for multiple pc builds and you don't need to upgrade that and you know power supplies all will get more expensive in the future so if you've got a good power supply you can use it in 10 years time as well basically that's what i'm saying the second thing you need to consider is power efficiency and this is something that isn't that important for non-creators or if you're a gamer or just doing a pc for non-creative use but for creators if you're doing any 3d work video editing work sometimes even photo editing work your system can be utilized 100% of the time especially if you're doing overnight renders or overnight exports of videos and so on for gaming and light usage it's gonna be all right um, to have you know lower power efficiency power supply because it's not gonna be used that long and it's not gonna make that big of a difference also creators often 
have much higher CPU and GPU systems than just gamers. Gamers might have a little bit of lower or even if you have a lower system CPU and GPU, then the power efficiency isn't that important because it's not going to make that big of a difference if it's 80 plus bronze or 80 plus titanium, for example. But if it's a high end workstation like a Threadripper system with multiple GPUs, then the power efficiency is a big, big thing because having that extra few percent of power efficiency when it's 1000 watts, for example, being drawn from the system, it actually equates to 30, 40, 50 watts of extra power just because your power supply isn't efficient enough. So for creators, if you have a very high-end system, having a higher efficiency power supply will pay for itself in the long run. The more you use the system, the more efficient it's going to be, the more money you're going to save. So you might want to opt out for more power efficient power supply. So then what are the power efficiency ratings? For example, this one over here and that one over there, this Corsair one and this Aerocool one, they are rated 80 plus bronze. This one over here is 80 plus gold. We have 80 plus gold over here. Then we have 80 plus platinum, 80 plus platinum. And this over here, the be quiet one is actually 80 plus titanium. So I've got this graph on the screen and you can see the higher you're going to go 80 plus bronze, gold, platinum and titanium, the more efficient your power supply is. But the interesting thing about the power efficiency is also that when you get the higher power efficiency, for example, platinum or titanium rated power supply, it also has a higher quality components inside the power supply. It didn't use to be the case but basically in order to achieve a better efficiency of the power supply you also have to use higher quality parts which will last longer so kind of these two work together when you're getting a power supply so the 80 plus bronze will not have as good quality you know components compared to the 80 plus gold and 80 plus platinum but 80 plus gold these days it's quite easy to achieve as well but 80 plus platinum and titanium, if you're gonna get those power supplies, you know it's gonna be a good power supply. For example, this one over here, you can see 80 plus platinum rating. That straight away will tell you, ooh, it must be quite high quality, you know, components there, as well as power efficiency. And that's why uh, you have something like Japanese capacitors over there, which nowadays don't mean that much, but it used to be that Japanese capacitors are much better. But now we do really need to look at the 80 plus platinum rating and also the warranty, which we're gonna get to in a moment. But then the quality of the power supply. I did mention that the 80 plus kind of rating is linked to the quality of the power supply. There was a gigabyte power supply that exploded because the components and how it was made isn't very good quality. And the way how you can spot if a power supply is a good quality or not is the warranty period. In fact, the warranty period matters much more than a brand. You can get a very good reputable brand power supply but if the warranty isn't that good, that just shows that the power supply quality isn't that good, even if it is a reputable brand. For example, this one over here, we're looking at the FSB uh, power supply. If you, you might have not heard about this uh, company, so you might think, ah, oh, this is a bad power supply. But if you look at the warranty over here, it's got a 10 year warranty of this power supply. That's absolutely insane. And in fact, if you want a good power supply, then make sure that your power supply has at least 10 year warranty. Some of them have even 12 year warranty. So if you have over 10 years, you know your power supply is gonna be good quality and the brand has the confidence of saying to you, look, even after 10 years, we can promise you it's gonna be fine after 10 years which most likely is going to last even longer, but they're just going to slap something safe on there as a warranty. A 10-year warranty, that just shows you can use that power supply pretty much for life. You know, it's going to be very, very, very good. So the next thing you want to consider when buying a power supply is the headers of the power supply. So when you look at the headers of a power supply, you can actually see, and all of the listings when you're looking at power supplies online will have like one picture where you can see the headers as well or on the actual description of this as well or specification of the power supply. But sometimes what I have found is that the specification of the power supply, depending on the shop, on the website, where it is, some Amazon listings, for example, can be a little bit dodgy. It's better to look at the picture because the picture will clearly show you how many headers do you have. And why are the headers important? If you are running multiple GPUs, for example, and you have different things inside your system that also need like supplementary PCIe power because some of the motherboards need, for example, the MSI Unify or now the Asus ProArt, the new Z690 and B660, 
require also supplementary power because the front USB-C panel has, for example, a quick charge port, so it can deliver power as well, which needs extra ports and so on. So you want to make sure that you have enough CPU and PCIe or graphics card, you know, kind of power connectors there. You don't need to worry about the motherboard and peripherals. Usually that's enough, you know, connectors there for SATA and um, Molex. Molex isn't that, you know, popular anymore, but usually that's enough. But the main thing is the CPU and PCIe. For example, this power supply in here, you can see there's two CPU connectors. So you can connect up to two eight pin EPS or CPU power of your power uh, of your motherboard because some motherboards now more mainstream is to see like eight plus four EPS power connectors on a motherboard. But on lower end motherboards, you don't need, uh, you know, two of these, but this power supply does support two connectors. So even if you're running like a Threadripper system, most likely you're going to have, well, you will have two EPS connectors. So you do need to connect them both and it won't run with just one. On some of the mainstream motherboards, you don't actually need to connect the extra, you know, four pin because these CPU connectors do split into two. They're actually four plus four. So this is like two times four plus four kind of connectors. You don't need to connect the four you know, pin in order to get your CPU running, but the four pin will just help a little bit with the extra power de delivery uh, if you're overclocking or depending which CPU you're using, you might want to use a little bit more. But then also the PCIe or GPU, you know, connectors over there, you want to make sure that you run the connectors to each of the GPU pins. Now, in a moment, it's not going to be uh, that important, uh, depending when you're watching this video, because like a newer a version of the power supply kind of guide is coming out or like a standard where there is a different 16 pin graphics card or PCIe kind of power connector which delivers more wattage but at the moment these 8 pin PCIe power um, plugs or headers can deliver up to 150 watts per header and if you look at the cables that come with this you know to plug into these PCIe um, power connectors then you can see that often the cables are uh, daisy chained together. For example, if we looking at this uh, cable over here, so this goes on the power supply here in the PCIe port. And then the other side has two headers and you can connect them to two separate kind of, you know, devices that need the power. But bear in mind, one socket or one header supports 150 watts. For example, if you plug this into your 3080, or 3090 or something like that that has a TGP higher than you know 300 watts for example uh, 3090 is um, 350 watts and Asus Tough this card over here for example has two headers so you're thinking oh I'll just use one cable it's gonna save me a, you know a little bit of a cable run to just put one cable there and then the other one on the other one and that's enough power right then what happens is that that graphics card is gonna start to draw more than 150 watts per cable well you know per header really but you know the the cable as well it's gonna draw more than 150 watts which this header is rated to which is very bad actually what you want to do is separate the power draw so you're not going to be pulling so much from one kind of header but you want to separate this out so if you have two headers on your graphics card make sure you run separate cables to all of these things so you might be asking but why do you even have these daisy chains if you don't want to run them to the graphics card well the thing is not all you know devices or uh, expansion cards for example require that much of power so for example if you have some kind of an m.2 expansion card for example or some kind of a usb c or an expansion card that requires supplementary power then using these kind of daisy chains will be fine because none of these devices will be drawing like 150 watts so they draw less in that case it's very helpful to have one cable so you don't kind of need to run lots of you know cables through them but for gpu that's like the golden rule for gpu whatever how many headers your gpu has run separate cables to all of your gpu you know there and that's why you need to make sure that you do have enough of those pcie connectors on the power supply when you're building a high-end workstation for example and you're running uh, two rtx 3090s there which we did for damien if you haven't seen that build there then i really had to think through how many connectors I need and how many cables I need from the power supply and that's why I had to change the power supply for example provider because even the wattage was the same in some of the you know power supplies but I needed enough headers from the power supply to actually run individual cables for the GPUs for the motherboard and then other bits that needed that 
So make sure that you do have enough headers on the power supply. Next of all, the PSU size. Now this uh, power supply over here is actually quite a big power supply. And there's usually two kind of labels of power supplies. You have SFX and ATX size uh, power supplies. This is an ATX size power supply, but you can have something like this over here, which is an SFX power supply, which is much, much, much smaller. And that's meant for like smaller, you know, like small form factor PC builds. But even the ATX size power supplies have different sizes. If you are looking, for example, this amp inside here is much smaller in terms of the size as this one over here, even though this is 1000 watts and this is 850 watts, but the 1000 watt power supply over there is actually smaller. So there is a different kind of lengths of power supplies, even at ATX form factor. So make sure that your, you know, case supports that or your actual power supply fits inside the case because underneath the case you might have the uh, hard drive cages if you're going to use them very very close to the power supply and if your power su supply is very long for example this one over here i wouldn't put in the corsair 4000d case if you are uh, running like the drive cage in inside there as well because you're not going to have enough room there to put all the cables you might fit there but it might be a big struggle there so it's just something to uh, you know keep in mind and obviously don't buy an atx power supply for like sfx build and i wouldn't do it the other way as well i wouldn't buy an sfx power supply for like a full ATX, um, you know, mid tower PC build. Then next of all, PSU cables. Now, power supplies have different kind of uh, cable options that come with them. What I mean by that is that you can have a fully modular, which this one over here is, which means that you have all the cables separately and you connect up as many cables as you need and you don't have any extra cables just lying around on the bottom of your PC compartment, which keeps the cable management easy and tidy and, you know, less clustered basically. But what you can also also do is have a semi-modular power supply or a non-modular power supply. So this one over here is a not a modular power supply which means that all of the cables from this PSU are just in one big bundle. So imagine if all those cables here just come out from there you don't have any of these connectors you can't add anything any everything just comes out from there and you have to deal with uh, you know that kind of build so the drawback of that obviously is that you have much more cables but the actual benefit of that is that it's usually cheaper semi-modular and non-modular power supplies are cheaper and they're usually lower um, quality power supplies as well but on the lower end of things if you're very much on the budget don't look for a modular power supply if you only need like 650 watts for example and um, your power draw you're using i don't know like a um, 12600k or i5 build for example with rtx 3050 3060 3060 ti you might want to save quite a bit by just going with semi-modular or non-modular power supply but also cable extensions you can get power supply cable extensions which adds quite a lot to the aesthetics of the pc and i'm a big fan of them actually uh, depending you know which pc build it is and uh, what we're doing but i think they're one of these things that really add a lot to your pc and what you can do is just buy them from all sorts of pay places but the very important thing i want to make sure you keep in mind is don't buy just random power supply extensions from a random website that for example in aliexpress i wouldn't do that because you can actually just fry your pc if you just buy a bad quality psu extensions if the pins are a little bit randomly soldered or they don't actually go together or i've had actually extensions that when i've put it in some of the pins actually just come out from the socket when using the motherboard you know 24 pin atx i've had some of the uh, extension just like cables come out i was like what the heck i've got two cables out i wouldn't do that if you're wondering which are good then there's some on amazon that are quite good just look at the ratings there and see which ones are there but also cable mods is a very good site to get a custom built and very high quality sites also if you are in the uk i know another guy who does them like in his own own garage and is very high quality uh, psu extension cables and very 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 good and lengths and everything if you want to properly customize this i'm going to leave him in the uh, description as well raw's custom pcs rory is his name i've used them before and vitamin c build with it it's worth checking out as well i think they ship even worldwide so i'll leave him in the description below as well and very last thing about the power supply is some of the extra features that your power supply uh, might have for example rgb um this one over here has rgb we have rgb on this fan this power supply there as well now it's not necessary but it's a sometimes cool feature if you like that or not but 
it's just something to consider if you really want it or need it. Need it? Who needs RGB? Hey, you probably want it or not want it. Then second thing is power supply kind of wattage meter or a screen on the power supply. For example, this ROG Thor here from ASUS has a wattage meter there so you can easily see how many watts is your power supply you know pulling straight away from from the socket which is very very cool and if you find that helpful or useful or if you just want to keep an eye on that it's like a cool thing uh, to have there bear in mind you do have to have a psu cut out on the actual case you're going to use otherwise this is just going to be you know you're not going to see that then another thing is an eco mod which uh, is on the back over here for example um some of the power supplies come with an eco mod and you're wondering what on earth is the eco mod basically if you have an eco mod on your power supply always turn it on what that will do is basically keep the fan off if the power supply is on a very low load or it's not so hot you don't need to spin the fan there which is going to make the power supply just quieter and uses less power as well because if it doesn't have to spin the fan it obviously uses doesn't have to use that you know electricity to run the fan so if you have the eco mode always keep it on i would say so it's only going to turn on when the the power supply is drawing enough uh, power so if you're wondering oh my power supply fan is not turning on do i need to uh, you know take it back to uh, the manufacturer because it's broken no it's probably going to have an eco mode or some kind of mo uh, zero rpm fan mode on to not spin the fans when your power supply is on a low load and another feature of the power supply you might want to consider is whether it's white or black there is not that many white power supply out there but I've got two over here uh, and sometimes you don't see that but if you do see that or sometimes if the power supply is visible you might want to consider uh, our the color of your power supply it might be important to you just something to think about when you're thinking about the aesthetics of your build or building the pc so that's the conclusion of a power supply buying guide for creators if you are interested in picking up any of these power supplies in here because i'd probably recommend all of them maybe not the aero cool if you are on a very high end you know build uh, but apart from that budget from this aero cool and this Corsair one over there uh, very good build but other than that these power supplies very very good i've all used them all in some kind of builds uh, apart from this fsb one actually but uh, go check them out in the description below if you want to pick any of those up i'm going to leave some good recommendations down there and if you're at this part of the video and you're wondering which pc to build for different budget ranges i've got best bank for bulk creator pc builds for one thousand dollar pc build 1500 now two thousand and a two and a half thousand pc build bear in mind a lot of the prices of these overall builds now can be made uh, a little bit cheaper just because the gpu prices have gone down so you can build the same pc uh, not just for 1500 for example now it's going to cost you 1200 or even less or something like that because the gpu prices have gone down i'm going to leave those in the description below if you want to check them out and as always likes if you enjoyed it subs if you'd like to see more and i'll meet you in the comment section below thanks guys for watching Bye bye